everyone, Philosopher Stoner 666 here. So I'm making a video. Don't know how much time I have on my phone to make it. Um, something's wrong with my SD card. And yeah, that, I don't know, I'm trying to fix it, but at least I can record now. So I think I got like at least 10 minutes. So yeah, I'm probably gonna title this video, The End Part Three. Um, I'm still thinking of going through with what I talked about before in my previous two videos. Um, with all this stuff going on about the coronavirus and stuff, yeah, I'm worried. Um, I have a license to uh, sell mutual funds in Canada. And so recently I pulled out all my money from the market. Uh, the economy has tanked. The Dow Jones, like yesterday, went down almost 2,000 points, 9%. It had been going down. Even gold, an old standby uh, investment, is going down. There's been a sell-off. Um, so yeah, my opinion is not. I'm not Warren Buffett. I'm not some in, some genius investor analyst. I did invest in cannabis stocks at one point, and I made money with that because I knew when to pull out. So the way I see it, Emendum even made a video about this recently. Is with this economy really shows how. Let's just say for the sake of argument that there's nothing with this disease. Everything's going to be fine. Whatever, people aren't going to die. You know, whatever. Just say for the sake of argument. It really shows how it's all being held together with duct tape and, and, and gum and glue and pieces of cardboard and stuff. Um, uh, if something like this can really crash the world economy, something is wrong. And what Amendum talked about in his video was the subject of debt. That, and I, like I said, I've worked selling mutual funds. I no longer do it. I've quit the racket. But you discover there's things called bonds. It's layers of debt. So the government, to raise money, doesn't just print money. They issue debt. They issue bonds. And they give you like 1% or 2% interest in return. And then they'll say, okay, I'll pay you next, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you next Tuesday for a hamburger today, like Wimpy and issue the bond for say five years we'll pay you one percent interest or whatever and so the government does that then that gets paid but in order to pay off that interest what do they have to do issue more bonds and there's all sorts of bonds there's corporate bonds uh treasury notes all kinds of instruments and you peel away the layers all it is is debt and more debt and so what's happened we had the great depression right and then uh uh, the two economists, Keynes and Galbraith, sort of figured out that you could do stimulus, that you could borrow money and stimulate the economy in the bad times. And it worked. Um, it worked uh, very well. The thing is, is the debt has gotten out of control. Yeah, every government around the world is, has deficit spent. Like the United States is trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. And people do not comprehend the enormity of the numbers. Uh, the enormity that that represents, the money is basically an IOU. And that represents productive work. So, you know, people get paid minimum wage in my country, $14 an hour. How many hours of work is that? And, and you could probably figure it out mathematically how many hours of work that is per person. The point is, is it's all debt and the debt needs to be repaid in order for Keynesian Galbraith economics to work. In the good times you save and then in the bad times you borrow and then the good times again you save and then you pay back the debt. So every time the stock market goes up, uh, the Pied Piper comes calling to collect his debt and the money isn't there. It's all a shell game. It's almost like a Ponzi scheme. Uh, people start calling in their bonds. And then, like I said, there's the money isn't there to uh, to pay the bonds, and then they got to issue more bonds, and, and and so on and so on and so on. The layers of debt. Now, you know, tons of people have been talking about this for decades now, almost almost twenty years. Guys like Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Gerald Salente, uh, the right wing libertarians. Um, and even the left-wing radical, it's called the Venus Project. So money used to be tagged to uh, resources. Uh, the most popular was gold and silver. And that put a limit on how much money could be printed and how much debt could be issued. You could never spend more than you make. 
or made. And so now we have this phenomenon of credit. And again, people didn't want to pay off the debt and people don't want to pay taxes. So they kept kicking the can down the road and kicking the can down the road. And like I said, the Pied Piper comes to collect and the money isn't there. That's really all it is. And that's, it's a systemic issue. It's corruption, basically. It's, it's, like I said, it's all a Ponzi scheme. And the people at the top win. The millionaires and billionaires, they win. Guys like Warren Buffett, they win. You know, Warren Buffett uses the stock market like a weapon. He uses it to take control of companies. And then he just keeps snowballing like that. Whereas the little average investors get fucked. It really, this virus and what's happened, like I said, saying it's nothing's happening. Let's just say uh, global capitalism, global capitalism doesn't work. One nation like China should not be the world's factory. So effectively what's happened now with the economy is that we are in the Great Depression again. In fact, it's worse than the Great Depression. And we're going to see mass unemployment. Things in the next couple of months are going to be very interesting. It's going to get ugly, folks. Like, be prepared. I seriously suggest that you stockpile on food. If you have a gun, get extra ammo. Prepare for like a month. Now, what most people have said is that this virus thing, it should be like a month of quarantine and then things will go back to normal. But what's happened because of the economy is that supply chains are being affected. Um, so that means nothing has come out of China in the past month because they've been on lockdown. So that means it's going to be delayed. It's going to be in like a couple of weeks. All the, the store shelves are going to be empty, pretty much. Uh, Italy's on lockdown, Denmark's on lockdown, El Salvador's on lockdown. Um, the pattern seems to be that this starts off as a couple of cases, no big deal. Yeah, it's just the flu. And then it, it balloons and then bam, 20% of the people that get it need the ICU unit. It overwhelms the hospitals, goes into quarantine and lockdown. Supposedly 80% of people that get this are fine. Supposedly, it's only the elderly that are really affected. Children seem to be fine. You know, it's probably nothing. You know, like, I do not think it's necessarily the end of the world, but we're in for some hard times. The next year is probably going to be really shitty. It's really going to suck. And going back to the economy, governments have deficit spent so much that they can't really do stimulus. It's just, like I said, it's just kicking the can down the road. This will happen again because the, the debt can never be repaid. It's just too big. Um, so that's the real problem. And so they're using the coronavirus to mask these systemic issues. And let's just say worst case scenario, this is something new like the bubonic plague. Like I read projections that supposedly the fatality rate is in the one to three and a half percent. Now, based on the exponential rate, growth rate of the infection, that translates into over 75 million people dead. But again, that's just a, a, we don't really know what's going on. And you can't really trust regimes like Iran and, and, and China and them, they're authoritarian, they don't work. But let's just say lots of people die. This has happened before in human history. The bubonic plague almost wiped out 60% of humanity, especially in Europe. And imagine living through that and going through that. It would have been absolute hell. Um, so really, it will be the same as it's always been. The strong will survive. The weak will perish. Um, it's going to get ugly. It's going to be ugly. Um, but I think it, it maybe has the potential in the aftermath to be a good thing. Like, for instance, certain societies that don't have very good healthcare systems at all, are going to be totally devastated by this if the worst predictions are true, like North Korea, uh, places in Africa, other places like that. All of that corruption will be washed away. It will also, like I said, demonstrate that global capitalism doesn't work and one nation shouldn't be the world's factory. And we are going to return to more localized economies, more regionalism, uh, more uh, of a rational distribution of things. And I mean, all of these, this stock market stuff and these money managers and these hedge fund managers don't really produce anything of 
societal value. It's not socially productive at all. Like I said, it's all debt. It's all issuing and structuring of debt. And by through that process, regulating the prices in the economy. But most of these people are all just parasites. You know, so it'll wash that away. Uh, people are going to lose faith in the, the stock market. People are going to lose faith in their governments. Um, people are going to lose faith across the board. And the message is that self-reliance is the key. You are basically on your own now. Like, and, and I don't know, I get this intuition that things are maybe even darker than what they're making out. Um, it was very strange that President, President Trump went from being very glib to the very next day, like we're banning all travel from Europe. Like really it's so much different information, so many voices screaming at the same time. It's crowd psychology. You know, there's a book I read ca called On the Madness of Crowds by Charles McKay. And it talks about things like what I've talked about, Ponzi schemes. And then there was the phenomenon of tulip mania in the 1600s. And it really does show that how individuals can be okay on their own. But then when you get them into groups, they behave like assholes. And that's very true. You see that in every social political system in the world, people get together in groups and do all sorts of terrible things. Whether you call yourself a communist or a libertarian or a capitalist, there's all sorts of cruelty and suffering that's being caused by groups of people. The second thing is that it's a, a wider death anxiety that we are now realizing we're more fragile than we think we are. Uh, there's a lot of news that's not being covered, but it is. There's a little bit out of the, the, out there that more and more diseases uh, have antibiotic resistance. So antibiotics has saved millions of lives and treated a lot of illnesses. That's not going to be the case anymore. We're, we're fragile and we're starting to realize it. And our, our culture, especially in the West, has sort of treated that uh, death is somehow an aberration when unfortunately it is the natural order of things. Um, I've talked about before in some of my other videos, the Buddhist path, the middle path, that something is gonna come and get you. And there's a good video uh, by Grey Tachi that uses an amendum video where it talks about the Goliath that's gonna come and get you. You will not win here. Something is gonna kill you. And this goes back to Ernest Becker in his book, The Denial of Death, at some unconscious level, all of us sort of realize, yeah, we're just going to die. And it drives us nuts. And we think we can control it. We think we can stop it. And like I said, it's a sort of a weird combination of the two. It's a combination of Ernest Becker's ideas and this group psychology thing that Charles McKay talked about. So what I fear the most is this economic impact and the fact that people aren't prepared. Now, like, you know, if you can afford it, most people, you should be prepared to handle at least 72 hours of an emergency. Like you should have 72 hours worth of food, water, you know, stuff to, to get you through. Say there's a thunderstorm and the power goes out, something to cook something, you know, you should be prepared. Um, probably even reasonably speaking, if you can afford it like a month, most people aren't. Like I said, it's this credit card economy, this debt economy. Most people are living pay paycheck to paycheck, paying interest, they're trying to pay their mortgage, they've maxed out their credit cards, or they're, you know, they're not making any money, they're living day to day, and they're not prepared for anything. You know, because of now with this economic crash, like I said, there's gonna be mass unemployment, there's gonna be, the, the, eventually, like in a couple of weeks, the shelves are gonna be empty, and what are people gonna do? And people are not prepared. Um, that's really what to worry about. I think it's more to worry about than the actual disease itself, but that remains to be known. Apparently, it's very ugly right now in China. You can't trust their state media <coughs> um, and all that. Um, it's, it's ugly in Italy. It's really high mortality in Italy, but supposedly South Korea has it under control, and they're using something called hydrochloroquine which is a drug that's used to treat malaria uh, that's quite effective combined with zinc apparently so there's all sorts of news there's all sorts of conflicting like really alarmist doom and gloom stuff to uh, 
you know, middle of the road to, ah, it's nothing to worry about, but I think something's going on and we don't really know totally what's going on. And I think they're trying to prevent a mass panic, but it isn't working. Um, ultimately it shows that, yeah, all of this global system and this globalism thing, it's too big to manage. There's just too many people and you can't keep a lid on it. And, you know, institutions that used to keep a lid on it, like quite understandably, like religion, right? aren't as effective any, anymore. It's getting harder to sell the same old bullshit. So people are freaking out because it's, like I said, it's an aberration. We're not supposed to die. Well, no, that, that's all we do here, you know. And it's depressing. It really bothers me. And I went on about it in my last two videos of, yeah, like if shit starts hitting the fan in a few weeks, like I'm taking it day by day, but if it starts to become like a semi-post-apocalyptic scenario, and I'm not saying that's going to happen, there's no, like I said, the economic stuff that I'm reading and it, it's real evidence for it is pretty grim. It's going to be bad. It's going to be a shitty year. But if it starts turning into, you know, we're looting and we're killing each other over the last can of beans and it totally goes to chaos and shit, then yeah, I'm out of here, you know. Like I said, take it day by day. Um, and sometimes, you know, I sort of feel like the, in, uh, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy, I feel like that character Bane, you know, um, when he sort of, he makes his speech before he unleashes the weapon or the whatever, and he's like, it will be rid uh, the Gotham City of the corruption. Um, like the bubonic plague did that. It, it got rid of all the crap and wages went up in the aftermath and society improved and it gave birth to capitalism and industrialization and really did change things and for the better. So like I said, places like uh, China, North Korea, their systems don't work. Authoritarian communism doesn't work, but also uh, global capitalism doesn't work. Um, all these things that don't work are going to be swept away. And like I said, the strong will survive and the weak will perish. But unfortunately, I fall into the camp of being one of the weak. I'm only as worried about it as I am because I have, I've explained before, a lung and a sinus condition. And if I get it, I'm statistically more likely to die. But that, that's worrying me anyway, regardless of the coronavirus. Like I get a simple cold and I have to go on antibiotics. In fact, I'm on them right now. I'm on them for 10 days. Well, okay, seven days left, but... Um, and I was on them like three weeks ago. And like I said, it doesn't take much to sort of fuck me up. Like it's, I, I'm not happy about it. It makes me worry. Um, but uh, like I said, I've said my piece about the coronavirus and the, the debt economy. You should really check out Amendum's video where he talks about the, the debt thing. It's a good video. Um, it's in the channel, Amendum Videos. It's like I said, it's a good video. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff going on. These are very interesting times. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know what to think, honestly. Uh, I'm sort of believing more, though, the doom and gloom stuff, but uh, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, other, otherwise, yeah, I still sort of feel the same. I haven't taken action yet. Um, partially because I'm afraid and partially because of my father. But say something in this uh, drama that's unfolding, if something were to happen to my father, then yes, I'm gone. Um, I have no reason to stay here. You know, um, my life's not going anywhere. I see clearly uh, we never arrive. You know, we never get to go to happily ever after. That was the total, uh, to happily ever after is to obviously totally bullshit. And... Um, I'm not a happy person, and I, I kind of want to get off the roller coaster. It's, it's, but as I said, it's, I was even having, like a few weeks ago, like two weeks ago, I sort of sensed something was fucky, and I pulled out uh, a portion of my money and put it in a real estate deal, and I'm sort of having reservations about that, too, even with the way the economy is going and the way interest rates. We're practically in negative interest rates, which means they're going to have to... Uh, basically pay people to borrow money which won't work so yeah so i pulled out all my money and um 
yeah, I'm tired of riding the roller coaster. Like, this, this doesn't go anywhere. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. And people think they can outsmart it and outwit the roller coaster and outwit the Goliath and outwit, outwit the monster that's coming to get you and destroy you. And no, it just sort of all ends in death and everything fades away and that's basically it. But at least I do get a catharsis in making these videos. My mind is in a very negative place right now. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what the future holds. Like I said, I take it day by day. But uh, um, I think this is the beginning of a very bumpy ride. It's going to be very interesting. And we'll see what happens. I uh, probably will be making more videos. And probably when I decide to do it, I'll make an, uh, like a announcement video and say hey sayonara suckers <laughs> i don't know uh we'll, we'll, we'll see anyways this is probably enough of a video philosopher stoner 666 out